Hi, welcome to the Ruckus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. Uh, we are going to continue on looking at the uh, Ruckus IoT controller and IoT strategy. Um, so in a previous one, we looked at what's in the box for the uh, IoT module. Um, and now we're going to start the installation. So we need to install the vRiot server. Now, prior to the vRiot server, you need to install uh, virtual smart zone, right? So um, what you're going to do is go to support.ruckuswireless.com and um, if we go down to choose a product here, if you scroll way down here, uh, you will find IoT FlexMaster Zone Planner. So you'll find the Ruckus IoT module software here. So if we click on that, uh, we'll see several images here. Uh, as well as documents. So if you go into documents, there's a getting started guide. There's a, um, uh, you know, installing the controller guide, uh, as well as a uh, managing the controller and, and, and several other things, programming guides, etc. But uh, as far as the software goes, um, here is the OVA for your virtual smart zone. So you can install this virtual smart zone either as essentials or high scale. It's totally up to you. And there's no difference in how you install this virtual smart zone versus any other. So if you don't know how to do that, um, you can look at m multiple other videos or resources to install a virtual smart zone. Uh, but it needs to be a specific version, at least for now. So it needs to be at least version 361. Uh, so this is 3612 here. So uh, the first thing you're going to do is download and install this uh, virtual smart zone uh, 3612 or 361 OVA uh, and get that up and running first. Then add your access points to that virtual smart zone as you always would. And that's it for, as far as the virtual smart zone goes. Get that up and running. No difference in installation from any other virtual smart zone. So the next thing you're going to do is you need the OVA for the uh, IoT server, right? So um, this is version 11006 at this point. It's an OVA file, uh, so it runs on ESXi, it runs on Oracle VirtualBox, it runs on VM Player, and it requires very little resources, right? It only requires two virtual CPUs, two gigs of RAM, and eight gigs of hard drive space. So you know, you could run this on, you know, on uh, VM player on your laptop, no problem. However, it also requires virtual smart zone, uh, which is it, uh, quite a bit more resource intensive. So you're probably going to want to run this on a, uh, on a server. Uh, so anyway, download this VM, this uh, OVA file. And then once you have that downloaded, then I'm going to install it on ESXi. So I'm going to hop over to my ESXi server. Login as root. And um, I already have several virtual machines here running. What you'll see, this is my virtual smart zone uh, 361 instance. So this is my instance that is uh, going to work with the vRiot, right? So I've already downloaded and installed the server. I have it up and running. I've added my access points to it. Uh, so then I'm going to create a new VM, right? Uh, so if we go under host here, uh, we're going to create register a VM as you always would, deploy it from an OVA file, uh, give it a name. So, oops, Ruckus uh, IoT server. Uh, and then we're going to drag that OVA file. So uh, we'll just find that OVA file that we downloaded previously uh, and, uh, and drag that over here, right? So it's the vRiot 11006 OVA. So we'll just next that, uh, choose your data store. Um, you can thin provision it, that's fine. Uh, choose the network it's going on. In my case, it's just going on VM network. Uh, and then we're just going to finish that. And uh, so down here, we're going to see it pull that file in. Uh, and we'll see it um, once it's successfully completed and it's got the server up and running, uh, then we can go in and configure it. So um, just give that a minute and we'll be back. Okay, so as you can see, 
um, uploading the image and, and uh, creating and powering on the VM is completed successfully, as we can see. Um, and so what we're going to do is we don't see it in our, in our VM list here, so we'll just refresh the screen. Uh, so here, Ruckus IoT controller is the one we created. So we're going to click on that. And then we're going to go into the console here. So uh, default username and password is just admin admin. Uh, and it's just a menu. So we're going to get network info. And we can see that DHCP has assigned it uh, 192.168. 1.32 so I'm just going to connect to that with a browser and finish my configuration all right so I will hop back over to my console uh, 192 no 168.1.32 um, so uh, it's going to drop you right into this configuration menu, right? We can see I'm on the Ruckus IoT controller version 11006. Um, and so qualified domain name. Uh, if you have a real domain name, I'm just going to make something up for now. Um, give it a host name. So vri.vm, uh, whatever you want that to be. Uh, choose your appropriate um, time zone here. So I'm going to be America's New York. Uh, you should set your time by NTP. That's a good thing. Um, and DHCP are static. So this being a server, you probably want a static IP. So we're going to be 192.168.1.136. Uh, give it a mask. Uh, default gateway, uh, and then your DNS servers. Okay, and then we're just going to start that service. So um, it's going to take about a minute to start up those those network services. Now, obviously, this is going to uh, time out when it's done, right? Because I'm no longer .32, so so that is now gone. There we go. So we're now on the Ruckus IoT controller. Log in again as admin admin. Obviously, you can change that. Hmm. And so uh, <laughs> what we see here on our dashboard when it starts up is I already have access points um, that are getting um, they're, they're getting the uh, the controller address from DHCP. So we can already see that there's two APs here pointed at this controller. Um, you, when you start it up, you're not going to have any. So in the next video in this series, you're going to see how to get your APs uh, connected to the controller, whether that be through DHCP or statically uh, in order to start your configurations. But if we look under APs here, we have two unapproved APs. So those APs are, have hit the controller, but for security reasons, you need to approve those uh, unless you want to pre-approve them. Um, but there's no IoT devices, and so there's a few things we need to configure to get it up and running. But that's the basics. It's now installed. It's running. And now you just need to add your APs in and, and your, uh, your IoT devices from there. So good start. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining, and have a great day.